Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Is it possible to be correct when all of the experts, like all of them, think you're nuts? This is uh, Iggy. I'm going to call him Iggy. He's a doctor. Well, he's not, not anymore. You can probably tell he lived a while ago. But when he was uh, alive and well, he was a doctor, he was a scientist, and he had a situation. There was a case where there was a very high mortality rate of women who uh, had given uh, birth. And he was trying to figure out what was causing this problem. And he, didn't, he knew there had to be a reason, but he had no idea uh, what it was. Finally, after a lot of uh, trial and error, he got to a point where he figured out a simple practice that was very easy to do. And when it was followed, it actually saved lives. Now, the problem is all of his colleagues rejected his idea completely. They ridiculed him. They branded him a quack. And he ended up being confined, confined to a mental institution where he died 14 days after being admitted after being beaten by the guards. His idea worked. His problem was he couldn't explain why. His solution was too out there, too unorthodox, too different from what the experts were used to. What's so threatening about different? Can you imagine getting in your car and turning on the radio and listening to the same song on every single station? Or could you imagine going to a, uh, a restaurant where you only had this one thing on the entire menu? Could you imagine queuing up Netflix and realizing the only thing to binge watch was one show? I think we could all are, are agree that a life with no options would be very boring indeed. Different is cool, except when it comes to things that challenge our beliefs or question our long-held assumptions. So our brain is a really cool thing. Our brain is engineered to be a pattern recognition machine. We are uh, built to notice changes, differences in our environment, which can help us. So if it's a normal day and then we happen to notice some big clouds coming in, that is a signal to us that a storm might be coming and we may want to uh, seek shelter. We might be driving along the road and it's like normal, 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 normal. Then we happen to see what looks like an accident up at the uh, up a few miles and that gives us a signal that we might want to slow down. Or maybe we're camping and we see a lion and there's a signal right there. The lion's not supposed to be here. I might want to avoid that, right? We notice breaks in the pattern and make a prejudgment to feel safe or prepared. Well, lately we've been struggling with this often helpful, but sometimes not so helpful feature of our brain, which is noticing differences and making snap judgments. We've been conditioned by watching after school specials that if we feel prejudice, that prejudice is bad. And if we feel prejudice, then we should feel experience these feelings of, of guilt and shame. Well, I will be forever grateful for my friend Jessica, who is a speaker, a former comedian, and a diversity trainer. And she told a room full of people I was fortunate enough to be in the audience for, she said that we don't need to feel guilty about these snap judgments and assumptions that we make because, again, the brain is doing them automatically. And they can be useful, like I just talked about. What matters, she said, is what we do with those assumptions. So her tip was when you write that story about something new, print it as a draft, triple spaced, extra wide margins. Why? Because you're anticipating edits. So coming back to my buddy Iggy, also known as Ignaz Semmelweis. So you might be wondering, what was his crazy, unorthodox, out there idea that everyone thought was crazy? Well, it was, it was prepare yourself. I mean, you're not even gonna believe that this is like, who could come up with this? This is so crazy. It was the idea that doctors should wash their hands. 
That was it. This was before, however, Louis Pasteur had done his research on germ theory. And uh, after Iggy died, there were scientists, uh, curious people, who did some research and dug into his claims and his theories. And finally, thankfully, his theories gained wide acceptance after he passed away, once we figured out there were these little tiny things called germs that no one could see. The other thing that Semmelweis inspired is a thing called the Semmelweis reflex, which is a metaphor for a certain type of human behavior characterized by reflex life like rejection of new knowledge because it contradicts entrenched norms, beliefs, or paradigms. Can any of us relate to this right now where we have certain things we believe or come to understand and then new data comes at us or a new claim that conflicts with what we've believed and it's really easy to completely ignore it and think of it as some crackpot idea. Now, sometimes crackpot ideas are crackpot ideas, but the important thing is to learn the lesson from Iggy and his colleagues. Were the experts jerks because they immediately thought his idea was off the wall? No, they were jerks because they didn't leave enough room for edits to the original story that they had of him. Unfortunately, they could have decided to be open-minded, to look for data, to do experiments, to listen more of like, why do you think this? And actually listen to his, his idea and uh, see where it led. They didn't. And that could have saved hundreds or thousands of lives. So what I think is a really good exercise, this is always a good thing, is to spend time exploring a point of view that is the complete opposite of what you're used to. If you watch a certain news channel, watch the other one. Read books, read a documentary, or listen to it. You don't really read documentaries. Listen to a documentary. Have a, con listen to this, have a conversation with a real human person, not a Facebook fight or a flame war. Just, just talk, just have a conversation with someone who looks at things differently. Not to necessarily convince them of your side or to be convinced of what they think, but just to have a dialogue. That's where the problem is sometimes is we get so outraged because of what I think is the Semmelweis reflex. Now, again, our brains are amazing. They're pretty darn great at exploring a point of view um, and noticing differences and making assumptions based on those. A more constructive alternative to wishing that our brains weren't good at that might be to figure out whether or not those assumptions and prejudices that our brain feeds us are actually serving us. And if they're not, to act accordingly. What would be the most helpful thing of all for us to do is to anticipate edits. <laughs>